Welcome back, y'all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. I'm Gerald David. I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Today, we're doing seared fish and farro. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Um, if you're like us, you've been getting your food out of a box like this. You know the deal. You know how this works. Ooh, look what we got in here. Okay, well, we got the lebna. That's part of it. So this is a lebna cheese that is going to go along with our seared fish. I'm very excited about this. It's actually going to become part of a garlic labna. That's the vinegar, I believe. We have some sherry vinegar here. The um, sherry vinegar. Yes. That so that's fancy. exciting. Very giant. Look at those. <laughs> some medjool dates. You could probably win a bet telling someone these are something else. We're like, I dare you 50 bucks to eat one of these. I don't want to postulate as to what he thinks <laughs> you can make someone guess those are. Oh, this looks very fancy. Oh, this is our pharaoh. Uh, ooh, veggies. veggies. There are not a lot of ingredients. This one's going to be pretty simple today. Bam! We have a zucchini. We Beautiful. imagine y'all know what this is for, but we just do it anyway. And some carrots. Carrots. Full body nice. And this, I love All carrots. carrots. It's one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things. All right. Well, the first thing we're going to do is do some salted water. Because that's how you cook the farro. We're going to get this guy boiling. If you've watched our show before, you know that almost every time they have you boil water, they have you salt it. Again, I haven't looked up why. Um, I'm not sure why. I usually look up interesting ingredients. but I haven't Electrolytes. What that does yet, aside from add electrolytes, as David has so scientifically it's what pointed out. Great. <laughs> and if you know, you know. Um, so that is a reference. But we're going to go ahead and get some salted water going um, to boil. And once that starts boiling, we'll toss our farro in. Next is going to be prep the ingredients. So we're going to need to wash Ooh, oh, yes. our veggies. <laughs> wash our carrots and our zucchini. Zucchini? I don't know. No, zucchini. <laughs> is zucchini plural then? I don't know. Maybe. Zucchini. Like taken over the bridge. <laughs> the zucchini have taken over the bridge. That's going to be a new Star Trek character. Just wait, y'all see. I'm going to go ahead and grab a knife here, and I'm going to tell David behind, because I have a yeah. cleaver in my hand, and I don't want him to turn around very suddenly. Um, so for the carrots, basically, we're just going to, we've washed them, y'all know we don't peel them. We're going to cut off the ends and discard those, and then we're just going to cut these into rounds. It's, again, it's a pretty simple recipe tonight. That one kind of looks like it's got a little bit of bad road on there, so we'll cut a little bit more mm -hmm. of that, but... All of these gone. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and then these are just gonna go into it says thinly sliced rounds. Perfect. It's not much else to check on. Why don't you give us some of the history of the pharaoh? I saw her googling. I know she was <laughs> self educating So I did look up pharaoh because I was not, um, to be honest, entirely sure what it was. Um, Looks like it's little seeds. Actually, an ancient grain. Um, and the really funny thing that I read, uh, I actually got a lot of my information about Faro off of an article from NPR.com. Um, and it was talking about the gentleman who wrote the article was talking about how when he went to buy Faro for the first time, like he'd had it in dishes and stuff, but he'd never actually made it before. And instead of buying the pearlized or semi pearl kind, um, which is probably the kind you want if you're going to use it like same day boil it, you know, like you would spaghetti or rice or anything else. Um, he actually bought the whole grain and for that, in order to make it edible, you have to soak it overnight. So if you do want to go out and buy farro, um, just like make sure that you know what kind you're attempting to buy, like what kind you want. If you want to soak it overnight, awesome. It's sense. not that hard to pour water over grain and let it sit there. Um, but that's like a whole extra thing you have to remember. Right. That doesn't sound awesome. And so if you're planning on using it like same day, you just want to make sure that you buy the pearl or semi-pearl pharaoh. Or if you're wondering like why does this taste funny and you're like, what did I... Why did I almost break my tooth on this? What Probably. Is weird? You bought because, the wrong pharaoh. Yeah. That's why I think it's interesting to note that. Because I think that's it. You bought the wrong pharaoh. Did you already wash this guy? I'm not entirely sure. I so I did. I'd say. No, I did. Okay. Yeah. I want to take over the cutting beans. This way oh. I don't feel like I'm just standing behind doing literally nothing as she talks and cuts. <laughs> so at least let me cut while you tell some of the stories of the things you love. Oh, yes, absolutely. Otherwise I'm literally just standing here and it just seems weird. So oh, sorry. I'm going to rebel and All take right, the so knife the carrots are done. 
Um, Gerald David is going here. to take the knife back and, you know, assert his manliness over the zucchini it's here. It's not even manliness. The, um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Assert his cutting skills over buy, the zucchini. Buy, buy. Yep. Which is so I have something to do because I know she did all the homework on all the stuff. <laughs> I did not do any homework on zucchini. I no, she's, like a, it, though. she's a trying hard. Don't let her fool you. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. You're right. Googling now things this, is so I hard. cut in half, right? You want to cut it um, lengthwise, I think, and then... Thinly slice it crosswise, but I will double check that. Is that how my bed is? Yeah. Yep, that is correct. And we're also going to peel two cloves of garlic and we're going to make them into a paste. You can do this with a, with a zester um, or a microplane. I have a microplane, um, but not here. So hopefully that will be here soon. And um, But for today, what we're going to do is basically. We're going to chop the garlic up really small. Then we're going to use the flat side of the knife to just kind of grind it into a paste. Um, and that'll work just as well as slicing love, it on a grater or a microplane. I love all things garlic. We have our little prep bowls here that we're going to go ahead and put our zucchini and carrots in until it's time to use them. Here is the garlic. Mm -hmm. I forgot to put that in the box earlier for our little bit. I know it says for us to mix the uh, cucumbers and the... The zucchini. Or zucchini. <laughs> I can't ever really tell them apart, cucumbers and zucchini. They do get mixed up a lot. Do you know, do we salt. add anything to this? Do we put oil and salt and pepper on these, or is it just um, this? We will when we cook it, but no, it's going to go into now. the... Yeah, okay. not currently. I think I need a bigger bowl. Let me try something. We definitely need a bigger bowl. Bigger bowl. A bigger bowl. We're so supposed to please, mix it. Please so put it in a bigger bowl. The last one, it went rogue. Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. But we can rinse him off and he'll be fine. There we go. Oh. Boom. So those are all of our chopped up vegetable ingredients there. Perfect. Um, what we can also go ahead and do yeah, is um, start combining the sauce. So if oh, you want to do the garlic, because um, that goes in the sauce, we'll go ahead and chop up the garlic cloves. Yeah, I'll do the uh, garlic. So as you can see, David just kind of um, crushed that with his hand to get it to separate a little bit there. And he's also going to show you a fun um, little way to get garlic to peel easily. Um, we always use more garlic than it calls for. So it calls for two cloves. We're typically going to use two to five. Um, just yeah, we like a lot of garlic. garlic. Yeah, we like we it. Garlic. It's one of the few things that's good for you and delicious. It's pretty much the fried chicken of vegetables. Is this a vegetable? Is garlic a vegetable? What is this? I'm not entirely sure, um, but I can Google that. Go to the Google. Exactly. Google, tell us. It's funny what it is you don't know until you wonder, or you say something. And now, you know, you got to correct yourself early because you're going to have 800 people tell you exactly what it is in the comments. Okay. I have no doubt. So, botanically, garlic, or allium sativum, mm. is considered a vegetable. It belongs, ah, right. it belongs to the onion family alongside shallots, leeks, and that makes chives. Sense. That makes sense. So it is a vegetable. Strictly speaking, a vegetable is any edible part of an herbaceous plant, such as the roots, leaves, stems, and bulbs. Mm. Therefore, it's botanically considered a vegetable. So, I, like I like it. Learn super stuff. Super awesome info there. So once I do this, I'm going to pretty much make this a paste. Is that right? Yeah, you're just going to chop it up really finely. Um, did you show them how to peel it? No, I'm still just kind of getting the rough off. I haven't really peeled it yet. Oh, you mean like yeah. using a little technique? Uh -huh. Oh, no, she can show you. I'll let you do that. So the fun thing I'll that I that. learned over the years about um, how to peel I did garlic. I did way. You were going to do it in the fancy way. Is you take the flat of the knife, lay it on top of the clove if it will let you. Make sure that it's stable. Pop. And then smash it. Spoon smell. And... The peel very easily separates after that, um, and you just have the usable garlic. And since you're chopping it up anyway, the fact that it's slightly smashed doesn't matter. Oh, it actually helps you. I'm doing it the rough way just because I like peeling it off this way. Oh, and our water um, is boiling, so I'm going to throw it? our farro in and set a timer. Perfect. Farro, farro, farro. Sounds like something you should bury deep in a crypt. Not throw in a pot of boiling water like lobster. <laughs> And then you should put a curse upon it, so that way you disturbed other people know. We've been cursed by the pharaoh. So we've added the pharaoh to our boiling water. Um, it says 18 to 20 minutes, so I've set the timer for 19 and turned it on. Um, and we're just going to let the pharaoh cook uncovered 
the water is going to come back up to boiling. It's just going to go for 18 to 20 minutes. Um, and so we've got that going. And we're back to our finely chopped garlic here. If you wanted to start doing that lavender mixture, and then all the sure, garlic uh, ready shortly, might come a little bit. This so way. for the sauce, and this is going to go over our fish. What we're going to do is combine the lavna, half the vinegar, um, and up to half the garlic paste. Yummy, yummy, yummy. So we're just going to get that into a bowl. looks like it looks like any kind of soft white cheese you can tell there's a little bit of moisture in there it is. Um, and again it's just like basically a really thick like yogurt cheese um not the yogurt cheese the garlic so, <laughs> love that is um basically a yogurt that has been strained of most of its moisture it's made in a very similar way to greek yogurt um and substitutes for love that include cream cheese and mascarpone um and again also yogurt um uh, probably greek yogurt especially because again it's been drained of most of its moisture so it's made very similar there's a lot of dressings and stuff you can do with greek lo uh, yogurt and lava oh we use it in place of sour cream i use it in place of all kinds of cream ingredients and recipes mm -hmm. and it's fantastic. it works really well works really well it's a little bit of a different taste but it's kind of lighter which I really appreciate. We're gonna use half the vinegar, so if you've watched our previous episodes, you might have seen Gerald David do this before, but he puts his thumb at about where halfway mark is, and then just pours and kind of measures to that. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. And what we're adding here, this is sherry vinegar. Um, so sherry vinegar is a type of wine vinegar, but it is obviously made from sherry. Um, sure. It has a softer sherry flavor than sherry. red wine vinegar, but it's not as sweet as balsamic vinegar. Mm. So some interesting little tidbits about like sherry that. vinegar. And then once David gets this chopped up, he's going to take, there he goes. Does this work to make it as a paste? Does that help smash it more? Yeah. So what you want to do is kind of like lay the, the flat of the knife against it and then just almost kind of scrape it against the board mm. to form kind of like a little bit of a, there you go, to ah. kind of mash it together into a paste. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, I'm learning. I didn't know that. I kind of seen her do it before, but I didn't know. I didn't know. really well. Yay. It's always nice to know that alternative methods work well. Oh yeah, that and I'm really, I'm not looking forward to having a cheese grater. <laughs> one of them things. If someone gave us one, we'd use it. But well, otherwise. And really for something like garlic, you don't want to use a box grater. Yeah. It's going to be really difficult to do. It's hard to tell when your fingers get close to you it. You lose like, a lot of it. You lose a lot of it. You do. It's not awesome. Um, for this, the best like instrument that I like, have found is a microplane and basically that allows that's you to true. just like set it over and just kind of grate over into the bowl and that's going to be easier and eventually we'll have one of those and i'll show you what that looks like microplanes are awesome you ready for about half yeah this? about half the the garlic is that about half yeah i think that looks good mm. and again more garlic, garlic breaks so like more than half super awesome we love it bring on the garlic well but we also want to make sure the other half gets to where it's going too because we are going to use the rest of that I would assume so. No, we are. I, I read ahead yeah, okay. in the recipe. <laughs> Look at you. So overachiever. Yeah. No one was coming next. All right. So, so we've then. We've got our garlic lavna sauce is actually I mean, complete. You don't Delicious. salt and pepper it? It's um, very rare. No, Usually you probably, salt you pepper probably pepper do. I tend to skip that one. I've noticed these dressings, if you don't put pepper in them, it's not the same flavor, in would, my opinion. Pepper is the one you can't get rid of. I would definitely, like, if you want to add a little salt, cool, yeah, definitely we'll do a little add bit. the pepper. I'm going to leave the olive oil out if David's cool with that yeah. because I just don't think it adds that much to an already, like, creamy, Now, cheesy. we did get avocado oil because Ooh, we read some fancy things. No, not red. You know what? Give credit where credit's due. My buddy, Way told me it's a great way to uh, fry up a steak. If you're going to pan fry a steak, it gives a little bit of that buttery taste for when you're doing your sear. And that's a whole other episode. Ooh, um, so, so is the that next thing we, The last thing we want to do as far as like preparing our ingredients is to pit and chop the dates. Okay. So medjool dates do contain pits. Do not just take a giant bite out of that's one. That's right. could break a tooth. Um, yeah, they're nasty pits too. They ain't awesome. Yeah, they, have, they, they do have a hard pit in them. So we're going to pit and then roughly chop them. And then to pit, I'll usually use like a spoon or something. Um, or sometimes I just kind of will smash it out or whatever. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I pretty much just squeeze that in. I mean, the, these are so soft. Yeah, the dates usually aren't that hard to pit. Um, they are soft. You might have to, like, pull that pit out. But 
Aside from that, um, there's not going to be chop this or what happens. Yeah, after we're going to roughly chop the dates once they've been pitted. So and the pits you toss, there's they're just seeds. Yeah. To my knowledge, there's nothing productive you can do with them. If I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments. Well, you probably plant them, I guess. Maybe. You grow a date palm tree. That is where mm -hmm. the jewel dates come from. That would be awesome. Open oh, that. Yeah, that would be. I'd love to have a date palm. I'm not sure what what climate those grow in, but. Definitely uh, try it. I imagine like really nice humid. I imagine dates growing someplace like California. You know what I mean? Someplace tropical. <laughs> someplace awesome and baller where the property tax is so high. Most people are just wanting to move in next door to you. Just as a status symbol. Dates are fancy. Aren't they something like gods and stuff used to eat or something Greek people? <laughs> Greek mythology, something like that. I'm butchering all those things. Uh, I That I'm not sure. I have not looked up. So I'm just going to have to defer to David's vast knowledge on Greek mythology there. I'm like Cliff Clavin. You can ask your mom <laughs> who that was. I know a lot of things-ish. Oh my gosh. That's really it's, good. I now feel so bad that I know exactly who Cliff Clavin is. <laughs> Why do you feel bad? You know who that is. Cliff Clavin's awesome. <laughs> You know, for someone who was, he was pre-Google, he had the desire he to was know Google knowledge. Before Google was Google. He just didn't know the knowledge. He had the desire to have it. He had the desire to want to disperse it to people. He had a real teacher's spirit, we'll say. <laughs> um, not a teacher's talent or ability, but he had the teacher's spirit. Something to be said about that. Mm, this looks really, really good. All right, I'm going to look ahead a little bit. Hmm. Because um, that's the last thing to do with the dates, isn't it? Yeah. And again, we're just giving these a rough chop, so, you know, I think no they're probably deal. about ready. Those are all chopped up. I'm going to rinse my hands off because they're mm -hmm. very sticky right now. Um, something okay. about dates is usually they are dried but not dehydrated, at least the medjool variety. Um, and it causes their sugars to concentrate, which oh, makes them very that. soft and very sweet. Um, and ah, also kind of okay. sticky. So when you deal with them, like, yeah, I expect to get, I'm gonna rinse this off get a little, little bit, bit of too. stickiness on your hands. Looks like I'll be prepping the fish soon. We still have about 11 minutes on this, which isn't too bad, considering how long the fish takes. And it means we have time for cocktails. Oh, that's one of my so favorite parts. I'm gonna part. call that, yes. I'll grab glasses. Thank you, I'm I'll good grab at alcohol. I'm good at glasses, I'm good at glasses. It's one of my things. Ignore the branding, this time it's not. Uh, Jack Daniels, we're going to do something a little bit special. Kitty picked this one out. I got still yes. carrots. Mm, let me get this guy for you. Thank you. Mm. What are we uh, making today, Kitty? So, what, you... what we are making today is a gin and a classic gin and tonic. Mm. Well, not mm. classic. This is a gin and diet tonic. Um, I try really hard not to drink artificial sweeteners, um, so I was really Hot excited. Tonics when I found out that diet tonic water doesn't actually have artificial sweeteners in it. It has quinine, um, but when oh, I looked okay. at this, basically it's just missing high fructose corn syrup as opposed to regular tonic water. So like if I can cut high fructose corn syrup out and not feel like I had anything lost, like yeah, thumbs up. It's a very that. useless ingredient. I'm it sorry is. to the high corn fructose manufacturer, I can't even <laughs> say it, it's so like icky, it's caught in my mouth. It's one of those ingredients, it shouldn't be in anything. It doesn't serve a purpose. It's like instead of paying someone to take your trash out, you've conned someone to buying it. You just mix it in with the cookies or whatever. Don't buy stuff with it. And we're lucky because today you actually have options. Because mm -hmm. I remember the first time I heard that and I tried to dodge it. It was not something you could dodge. It was going to be in your peanut butter. It was going to be um, in your sodas and stuff like that. You can actually have some good options. And the difference here, um, the reason that I care at all really is because diet tonic water has five calories per 12 fluid mm -hmm. ounces. Um, regular tonic water has 130 calories um, per serving. Uh, so there's 125 calorie difference per serving there. If you're trying to be calorie conscious like me, you've been quarantining, you're like maybe not feeling so great about your work clothes fitting when you go back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm gonna go for the diet tonic water that doesn't have artificial sweeteners or high fructose corn syrup every time. Um, mm, we have some fancy. awesome gin here. I'm super gin girl, I love it. My sister-in-law and I used to have girls days where we would just make gin mm -hmm. and diet tonics and like that was our thing. So basically three ingredient drink here. We have our gin. We have our diet tonic water, and we have lime uh, wedges. Um, lime wedges. I thought you said lime wedges. <laughs> they catch a spell on you. Yeah, they do. They're very, lime very um, spell binding. 
But what you we're going to do... put about a shot each, or...? Yeah, about a shot each. So, as we said last time, if you don't have a shot glass or don't care to use one um, to dirty another dish, you're just going to count to about three um, 1,000. So, one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. Awesome. All right. We might even have one more. I don't know. Perfect. I'm going to fudge mine a little bit. <laughs> I see, I see, I see. Well, I really like gin. <laughs> so, we've got our gin in there. Basically, we're just then going to fill up, thank you, we're just going to then fill up the glass till whatever okay. with our diatonic water. Um, and added bonus, so mm -hmm. you can see on here that it says contains quinine. This mm. is something that they, the FDA requires to be labeled on there. Um, interestingly, quinine is actually um, historically and sometimes uh, modernly used to treat malaria. Really? Um, as a drug. Yeah. So, you know, get your malaria prevention in the summer, guys, and drink some gin and tonics. When I was in Africa, we had used to take, I think it was pills. For yeah, it. We were also, we had shots for, Oh, we had shots for the yellow fever and stuff. I think that's the one that you had so, to go for. So, we have a couple that are prepped just with little um, cuts, horizontal little cuts slits. here to be able to go on the glass just to look cute, you know. Perfect. With your lime wedge. Then we're going to take our other smaller wedges here, and we're going to go ahead and squeeze them into... Move this. Don't forget trying to remove your stickers. And also, like, if you have somebody standing near you while you are squeezing a piece of citrus <laughs> into anything, please try to be kind and, like, block with your hand for them if you can at all um, to prevent that from going into their eye or, <laughs> you know, any other sensitive area that might take a hit. Oh, so you just squeeze that in there? Yeah. Just squeeze this. Is it, like, ruined if I get a seed in there? Is it, like, <laughs> oh, no, throw it all away? No. You can even swallow it. And because there's no sunlight in your stomach, um, it won't even grow into a lime tree. Is that the trick? I thought he just had to have... Oh, there we go. There we go. I and got it. Oh, that looks you delicious. You don't have the super hand strength like I sometimes don't. Um, I trust Gerald David can get the rest of that in there. But it was oh. already done pretty well. So oh, you want more just... of this in there? Is that I what's mean, going if you on? can, sure. Unless this was trash. Like, how much are you trying to get out of here? I just said oh, you could yeah. get more, and obviously you could. Um, yeah. The other cool thing is we... Oh, that's right. Now we have limes. Yes, so we have additional limes. And so what we're going Allow to do... To thank you. Is we're going to use these limes in the rest of our recipe, even though it didn't come with the recipe, because I have this awesome book that you can just look up ingredients, and it tells you flavor affinities, and lime goes with the salmon it goes with the dates and it goes with the labna um so it's a flavor affinity for all of those flavors so i have a really good you know idea that it's going to go with everything and it's going to be really great on our fish so added bonus cheers cheers mm. Mm. that's refreshing and the trick too about having these little garnishes it's not just for looks it really helps with the smell remember you taste your food first with your eyes second with your nose last with your mouth and that really helps you get a little sniff of that and you're like oh, okay kind of sets up the palate like have you ever gone through a drive through somewhere and you ordered a whatever soda and it came out of whatever you know what i mean it almost freaks your brain out you're like, I was oh, not like if you this. accidentally get a sprite when you ordered a pepsi but you can't see into the glass so you take yep. a sip thinking you've got pepsi and it's like a sprite or something that can be a total like yeah it breaks my brain yeah for it sure. breaks my brain <laughs> what we have to do next is time to prep the fish and you all know how to do this. Get the paper towels ready. Oh, that drink's really good. <laughs> David, uh, Gerald David did not think he liked gin, so this I is kind of I definitely don't a... like it by itself. <laughs> I definitely don't like it by... It had the word diet somewhere in there, so I was like, I don't know also, he what's going on here. Also, he doesn't stuff because of the artificial sweeteners, so this was like a big coup to be able to figure mm. all this out. All right, so... Move it this way. You'll have me the fish. Yes. I what kind of fish is this today? This is salmon. Salmon. I like salmon. I've actually caught a salmon before. Just one. No. Um, I ended up putting it back. Let's see. Um, this is sustainably sourced Atlantic salmon. Awesome. Cut this. Oh, and didn't you look up something about different types of pharaoh? What were the different types of pharaoh? So, yeah. I found this really interesting. <laughs> There are actually, farro is a grain. There are three different types of farro. Um, there are all Which grains. one is the one you have to soak? So the whole grain has to be soaked overnight. The pearl or semi-pearlized farro is able to be just like cooked and boiled like a regular rice or grain. Okay. Um, 
But yes, the Emir, E-M-M-E-R, is the type of faro that you'll see most commonly sold in the U.S. Um, and it's just a little bit of a, I'm going to cheat here because I can't remember if it's harder or softer. It's a harder grain um, than the others, and it's commonly confused with spelt. Spelt is actually another type of faro grain. Um, not sure why these two get confused, but... Typically, Amir is the one you're going to see sold the most, um, and it's going to be a little bit harder. But again, if it's pearlized or semi-pearlized, you can just go ahead and boil it like we are. It's literally in there for um, like 19 minutes boiling, and it's going to come out soft and delicious. If you get one and you boil it and you it does not get softer or whatever, assume you got the whole grain and maybe like recheck those package instructions uh, as far as preparation. What were the other two called? What was it? So the other two are called um, Einkorn, E-I-N-K-O-R-N, and like I am going off of these phonetically. Like Einkorn? Like the band, I am corn? No, Einkorn, E-I-N-K-O-R-N. Um, so again, I'm going off of these phonetically, so if I mispronounce them, like absolutely, like it is a possibility, these could be totally wrong. Mm. Emir is the one typically sold in the U.S., E-M-M-E-R, oh, okay. and then... The other one is just spelt. So it's einkorn, emir, and spelt. Um, <laughs> yeah. So those are the three types of farrow. It does, it's high in fiber, which three is types. awesome. Oh, it's... no, two fingers. <laughs> three types. Try that again. Three types. Can you see it? Three types. <laughs> it's low on the glycemic <laughs> index, um, and it's very high in, like, I want to say, um, I'm double checking because I looked up some mm -hmm. other facts, too. But it's very high in antioxidants. Um... And I want to say that, yeah, and the B vitamin niacin. So oh, yeah, I like the fact that a B vitamin's in it. Mm -hmm. Can I put a pause in this for sure. a second? It's now time where if you'll put oil in that pan for me. Okay. My hands have been contaminated. I've been handling the fish. And then go ahead and turn that up so it can start heating up. And then we're ready to spice the uh, fish. I like to turn the eye on. That way this is heating up a little bit. Once we're at the spicing, the fish point, or spicing the protein point. Okay. And I think all this is getting is salt and pepper. This is, and we're going to hit it with some lime juice because we've decided. Because we're fancy and lime really helps. Like, don't they also cook things with lime, like ceviche? That's a thing, right? Um, so ceviche is a method of a protein. It's not technically cooking um, because no heat is applied. Mm -hmm. But it does basically, I want to say, and I could be wrong about this. I have not Googled it. This is off the top of my head. I want to say it effectively, like, basically pickles the fish. Oh, pickles it. Um, I thought it so cooks it, the fish. So wow. it. It somehow makes it safer to eat than no sort of cooking method applied okay. to it. Need pepper? Yes. So salt. And we've got our pepper going on Yummy. here. That was great. And you guys know I love pepper. Mm -hmm. So. Really helps things kind of just have a little bit more complexity to the flavor palette. And it seems weird because pepper and salt are like the two things you pretty much add to everything. But. And these are going to go on what, David? Skin side up? It will go on uh, skin side up. She is correct. So this um, definitely needs to come up to temperature more. This is mm -hmm. to like super not doing anything when I move it. So we'll give that a little bit longer. All but right. our farrow is about to be done. Oh, is it? Yep. It's already up there? Oh, it's already up there. <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, did you see it though? I can't touch it because oh, I yes, have the stuff on my understand. hands. I'm trying to tell him like a, nope. <laughs> a cool production way like we have this worked out. He just we didn't don't tell me exactly where it was. Up there is not the same as where it was. I was trying um, to be sly, but thanks for you know calling me out on something I was trying to keep. You're welcome. Subtle. She doesn't know the subtleties of production yet. Yeah. Um, and I I'm just the talent. To. So um, what we have here is the pharaoh has gone off. Um, I've yeah, stopped nice. the timer, and we're just going to go ahead and drain this. And I've turned the heat off on mm -hmm. that. We're going to drain this over the protein side. Perfect. And then we're just going to, once we've drained it, we're going to put it back in the pot. So it's not the super biggest deal if not all mm -hmm. of it comes out. It's just to basically get all the excess moisture. Because it will go back in there. Right. And you can just kind of set that on top of the pot. We have one that was sit on it. Not all of them do that. Well, I'm going to put it back in because we have to add other stuff to it and mix it up before the thing is over. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. We're not saying the same thing. I was saying to let it drain. You can just let it sit oh, on top yeah. and let it drip a couple more times. Yeah. No, that looks great. Awesome. All right, now if you'll check that again. I'm really eager to wash my hands, so I'm kind of <laughs> over just standing here like a surgeon. That seems pretty good. The, um, get that to coat that center part right yeah. there. Yeah. Because it's moving pretty quick. Not that you guys can tell. I'm just having to narrate it like it's a, a weird golf tournament. And he comes up to the tee. 
Have you noticed how they always whisper? That guy's in a booth far away. That dude cannot hear him. On the green, he cannot hear that announcer, dude. I get back in the day, he probably could, but not modern they game. Do well, there we go. So do they do a So you put yourself effect? more in there. If the guy was talking uh, normally, how would you feel? So we're going to put the skin side up. Maybe she does know a little production secret. <laughs> um, we got to set the timer. No, I just know psychology. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set this for... And since we didn't hear a sizzle when that goes down, it's we're going to set it a little bit longer rather than mm -hmm. shorter. So it's three to five minutes. So we'll do it for five. And we can always check a little before that if we want to. All right, get some soap. We've got that going. Yes, absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. That, that. Awesome. There we go. Thank you. He's going to wash all that fun stuff off. Um, just a fun note, because this is skin on salmon, we put the skin side up. We've seasoned, skin is yummy. We've seasoned the other side. Um, I did look up just to see... What are the benefits of um, eating the salmon skin, if any? Yummy, yummy, yummy. Apparently, salmon skin is packed with omega-3 vitamins. So, super, super, super awesome. Um, I want to say it's fatty, a fatty fish oil, uh, but it does help with things like eyesight. It can help lessen the symptoms of depression. Like, it's super good for you. So, if you are at all inclined, like, go ahead and eat that fish skin. It's got a lot of good omega-3s in it. I think he's ready. What kind of omegas is it? Omega Man? Omega, Omega Man lives in it? That's oh. what I heard. Omega Man. Omega 3 fatty acids. No, Omega Man. Uh-huh. I like my version better. It's far more cool and has superheroes. I'm not sure what the difference is between Omega Man and Aquaman, but I would like to see them battle and figure out who wins. No, Omega Man is like a cult, like, classic movie that's... I don't know. I haven't seen it. I know, like, I Am Legend is maybe based off of it. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, I thought you were just making stuff up. <laughs> Omega Man was a movie. Had something to do. Okay, well, Omega is also, like, Latin Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. Omega meaning the end. So, yeah. I don't necessarily think it was based on the fatty fish acids, but you never know. Who knows? Ooh, at what point? Are the dates a garnish? Or are they going to go I... with the carrots? Because once the fish is done, well, they're going to put these in the frying pan next. Oh, am I supposed to cover the fish? I remember that. I think I cover it. Um, I think we are supposed to cover it. Shields up. Yeah, you can loosely cover the pan with foil. Uh, we never use foil. We I use don't do foil because I don't like throwing things away. Don't. So I use the lid. And my lid has a little vent thingy. Not all do. Um, like, well, this one does not. This other lid has a vent thingy. Um, but I'll just kind of use this. And if you need it to vent, you don't have a vent thingy, you just kind of offset it. I don't know if you can tell how I did that. So you just make sure it's not completely offset it. Boom. flush with the side. I don't know how like obvious that. that is, but yeah. And that works too. Mm -hmm. We got our heat a little low, so I'm not going to offset it. I'm just going to let that sit there. Ooh. And the best way to fill dead air as she stares at her phone. Okay, so we're going to add the chopped dates with the cooked vegetables to the pot of farro mm -hmm. once the vegetables have been done in the pan. Mm. So they're just going to be like thrown in there fancy, for fancy deliciousness. Cheers. cheers. To entertaining you. And deliciousness. And deliciousness, that's true. Always deliciousness. Hmm. Oh, let me throw this kind of wash real quick. What else does that oh. cherry vinegar go in? Is that going to go in the vegetables? You know, I don't know that it has us use the other half. Yes, it does. We're going to add the remaining garlic paste and remaining vinegar at the end of the cooking process of the zucchini really? and carrots. Really? Mm. That sounds yummy. Fancy. Zucchini and carrots. Let me take a peek at that yeah. real quick. I like to reassure myself. I don't check my instructions a bunch. So basically what it says is our fish is going to cook. Um, for three to five minutes. We've got it on for five because when we put it in the pan, it didn't sizzle. So pan wasn't quite up to temperature. We'll go ahead and cook it a little longer. We keep our pan lower than the recommended heat um, just because we found it burns a little too easily when we have it up that high. Mm -hmm. Once we flip the fish, the skin side will go down and we're going to hit it with these lime wedges left over from our gin and tonic. Yep. Um, we'll cook that for another two to four minutes um, until we feel the fish is cooked through. When you have really good sourced salmon, um, like obviously don't eat it raw, don't eat it ceviche unless it is sushi grade or sashimi grade salmon, okay? You cannot just go buy salmon at the supermarket and be like, sushi time! That's it right. doesn't work that way. Please don't do that. 
Um, That's right. Salmon That's that right. you can eat raw is typically sushi or sashimi grade salmon. It's going to be more expensive. If you can get it, like by all means, super mm-hmm. cool. I love sashimi. It's one of my favorite things. Um, and then the other thing that we're going to do is flip that over, hit it with some acid, hit it with our lime. Um, and then we're the lime, not acid. That. The acid's part of the lime. As- lime is referred to as an acid in cooking. <laughs> lime is referred to as an acid in cooking, so we are going to hit that with some acid, going to hit it with the lime. And then we're just going to um, let that cook for two to four more minutes, and then our veggies will go in. And that's kind of where the rest of this comes in. Oh, and there's our timer for the awesome. fish. So as soon as that fish goes off, what we're going to do is um, just flip it so the skin side is down. We're going to hit it with some lime. Again, as you heard previously, um, lime is considered an acid. So you can say we're going to hit it with some acid. We're going to hit it with a lime. Ooh. Oh, great. There's our fish. What's the next timer should be? It's going to be two to four minutes. So I probably put it on for three at least. Mm. Um, and then, of course, we want to make sure that our pan's not dry. If it is, we want to hit it with a little bit more olive oil just to make sure that things aren't going to stick. That's the thing. When you use that top, it won't be dry. It won't be dry. This is swimming right now. Probably more liquid in here than the ocean it came from. <laughs> Which is great because, yes. personally, I would rather not add oil like, and have it cook than add more oil. Um, I'm kind of a big proponent of... Like the less is more theory when it comes to oil and stuff. Even though we do use extra virgin olive oil, um, so it's like a good fat, but do it's we, still you want to. Do we add anything to this? Should I salt um, it we're gonna hit it with, No, if we're gonna hit it with some lime, ah. um, and that's gonna be fantastic. So we've got two lime, two Ooh, uh, lime halves there, and Gerald Davis just gonna hit the side that is up um, that does not have skin on it with that, and we're just gonna let that cook, and it should be fantastic. I love citrus on fish. Yes. Lemon, lime. I don't think I've ever done orange, but lemon and lime. I have. It's pasta. awesome. Have you? Uh-huh. What did you do orange on? I don't know. I have. I can see it. I just don't think I've done it. But I think I would like it. No, I'm not the best at remembering that, things, but I do remember having some orange type fish thing, and that's what it was. Let us know your Ooh. favorite fish recipe that has an orange in it. Maybe we'll feature it on the show. Oh, that cool. would be awesome. And in general, send us your recipes. We collect them like baseball cards, like postage stamps, like vintage handcrafted memories. For real, and I'd love to play with recipes. I was talking about that resource I have earlier where you can just look up an, ag- an ingredient and find flavor affinities. Um, so, like, I will look at a recipe and then be like, but what else do I want to add? Look up that ingredient, see what else goes with it. And it gets, starts getting freaky and weird, which I love. So <laughs> that works out well. Well, and it's really surprising what does pair. Some things that you would never, ever imagine go together are really quite magnificent when paired. And, like, mm. this book also works. It's a, mm-hmm. It has scientific pairings in it as well. So, like, on a molecular level, caviar and white chocolate actually pair well together. Who'd have thought? I haven't tried it. I do it, not like caviar. But I do trust this book, so I'm fascinated to when I get a chance. Um, I'm the chocolate. She's the caviar. <laughs> wow, you're sweet and I'm salty? Tr- uh, cheers to that. Uh-huh. That was mm. very intense. See how she took my compliment and turned it into like an assault? I'm not sure he knew what he was saying. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers to forgiving all the things I don't understand. <gasps> mm. Mm. That's very good. So we got a couple minutes... Oh, no, we do not. We have 17 seconds on that fish. Once that's done, I'm just going to put it on a plate to hang out for a little bit. And then we're going to start putting the, the vegetables on the skillet um, with the fond. So don't wipe it out or anything. So fond is um, what the brown mm, bits uh, after you cook a protein that it's are left in the It's not a freaky fond, which is what <laughs> I thought it was. That's our timer there. So our fish is done, looks cooked through. Um, it's looking good. You can see how the whole side is pale. If it's a little pink in the center or whatever, that's fine. You don't have to cook fish nearly as long as you do, like that's chicken right. and some other Chicken proteins. and ground beef are the two real wash points, or ground meat, I should say, are two wash points. But fish and steak, you can get a little bit different. And the flavors will change as you experiment with those temperatures. Mm-hmm. So our fish is good. Um, we're going to remove those. The, what's left in the pan is what is referred to as fawn. And we're going to add our vegetables to that. We don't want to wipe it out or anything because that's going to give our vegetables some extra flavor. Uh, we don't have to add additional seasoning or oil or anything like that. Um, we might have to add a little oil, but as far mm-hmm. as flavor-wise, it's going to come from that fond that um, is left over from the fish. Perfect. 
which, oh my gosh, smells so freaking good. We are going to put a little bit of oil. Sure, sure. Absolutely. And again, it usually calls there. for like two teaspoons. Yeah, we do a drizzle. Like, And then is it uh, the carrots and cucumbers now? Is that what's first? Uh, yeah, so you're going to put the sliced zucchini and carrots in there. Ooh, not guys. cucumbers, zucchini. I am not good at remembering. Cucumber has a lot um, more water in it, so this is going to turn out very ah. differently if you use cucumber. <laughs> That's um, an important distinction. A little bit, yeah. We're going to cook that on uh, high to medium high, depending on your appliances, your utensils, um, stirring occasionally for four to five minutes or until slightly softened. Because of the size of the carrots and everything, I cut them relatively thin. Um, so we're going to just try it for four minutes and see what it looks like after that. I'm going to hide this in the microwave to kind of keep it warm. This is a great trick. I never knew this before Daryl, David, and I got together. Like, keeping things in the microwave in order to, like, not have to um, coat them in, like, Tupperware or plastic wrap or whatever. No, that, like, works for a day or so, you know? Like, if you just want to store it in there, if you're going to eat it the next day, keeps it moist. Like, it's awesome. I don't know if I do that with fish, per se, but as no, far no, as no. keeping it, you know, <laughs> ready for Sorry. serving. Not fish. Um, I was talking about baked goods specifically when yeah. we've made cookies or brownies slash cookies that we made the other night. And it stops you from eating one every time you pass it. That's it's true. It's a little out, like of sight, out of sight, out of mind. mind. You gotta remember, yeah. ooh, we have cupcakes. Not every time, ooh, cupcakes. Yeah, mostly for baked goods. Please do not mm. put your fish in the microwave to store it as leftovers. That was not what I was saying. And I apologize <laughs> for any, any misunderstanding. Like, please don't do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, we got uh, three minutes left on the fish. Yummy, yummy. Or not the fish. On the vegetables we put in the skillet. Three minutes left on the veggies. And on the veggies, we're just like stirring those occasionally. Um, actually, is that stirring frequently? But oh, does it say that? Yeah. Well, then we can do that. The, um, oh, when do we add the garlic? Is that once the three minute timer comes Yeah, on? it's going to be one of the later steps. And we're probably going to want to put that top on it for a little bit, too. That's going to really see, help yeah. the moisture get in there. So I've stirred it a little bit. Um, I can just tell you, like, nothing is happening with those vegetables right now. They don't I'm even put know the top on it. they're in a skillet. They don't know heat is being applied. Um, they're still very, very firm. Yeah. Kind of that incrementally like warming bathtub situation that where, like, you don't know you're boiling to death because it's so slow. I'm going to add a little bit more pepper to this. Not for any real reason other than just a fill time. And we no, always love pepper. I so. do love pepper, which is why we do the fresh round. This isn't to be bougie. It's because the taste is far more um, vibrant. Do um, people do things just to be bougie? I think some people do. Wow. Um, that's why I have to say that. Or Tell maybe I'm defensive from all the people that just uh, say I'm bougie or Tell whatever. Tell us what you do to be bougie or what you think we do that's bougie. Because <laughs> I would be fascinated to know that. Like, for Hashtag real. bougie. You ever seen us in our front deck with mimosas? That's pretty bougie. <laughs> Um, Mimosas in general. But we like to try and keep a balance. For every mimosa, you just need a good beer, you know? I'm pretty sure he just said for every mimosa I drink, I have to have a beer. So brunch just got a lot more interesting, ladies. Mmm, <laughs> this is going to be so good. Oh. oh, they're coming along nicely. They are. Mmm. You know what would be good with something like this? And we don't have it, so I'm not going to be able to add it. Um, what? I think a little bit of uh, hot peppers would have been good in this. You know, if it had mm -hmm. banana peppers and green peppers and red peppers, I think that would have been nice. Like bell peppers? Yeah. So those are typically considered hot peppers, um, hot but peppers. I do think those would be really good in that. A hot pepper would be more like a jalapeno or up. Um, those are going to be oh. more like mild or medium peppers. Well, you know. But they do add, A, like they're great for color. If you want to add color to mm -hmm. a dish, they're mild. Um, so they're not going to like burn out your mouth or whatever. They're not going to be too overbearing typically. They and they add beautiful color to like a salad or, you know, whatever. Like just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love to buy like the tricolor peppers, um, bell peppers, and then like slice them up and add them to salads in the summer. It makes me so happy. So we're getting very close. Oh, this is going to be so delicious. Pretty much once these are done... We're gonna dump it all in the cooked farrow. Um, oh, nope, I'm skipping a step. So once this timer goes off, um, we're gonna add the remaining vinegar. Sherry vinegar. Sherry vinegar. And the garlic paste. Um, at which point, it's only gonna stay in there another two, three minutes. Oh, that's it. Woo. So, sherry vinegar, as we just read. Right. In goes the sherry. The rest of the sherry vinegar. 
Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the garlic paste as well. I love when he does this. He looks like such a professional chef. Like it's so hot. Awesome. I love him. Let me get that just, just right. He looks so pro. He just like sweeps it in there like mm, giant hands. It's nice. Anyway, um, whew. so we've added the garlic and the sherry vinegar. I've got the timer going again now. Ah, <laughs> uh, so that might not have been me. Um, again, you can kind of season that with some pepper. Try not to add too much salt. Don't have a lot of faith as to what's going in it if I let him do it, but. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> but at least pepper. Um, that's gonna be two to three minutes. We're doing about three. Carrots tend to take a little bit longer. I think that's why they have you do it for like two different sections, five. Mm -hmm. It's a total of like eight, nine minutes in there because of the carrots, which is why we slice them kind of thin. Exactly. I was going to say it also depends on the thickness of your oh, sliced vegetables. Good. The thinner you slice them, the less time it's going to take them to cook, just as a rule of thumb. Like, kind of obviously. But. Now, I don't like them super soft. I like them to have a little crunch. So, pros and cons, there's a magic balance in there. And putting the top on, that is going to make them softer. Like, so the longer you have them in there with the top mm. on, the softer those are going to be. If you're looking for a little bit of crunch, you want to leave the top on less or not cook them quite as long. So that's it. We got yeah. three minute timer going. We're down to that two minute mark. At that point, I was trying to sound smart earlier and I got it all jacked. At that point, we're then going to add these delicious vegetables to the delicious farro. Mix all that up. Add the dates, a little bit more olive oil, it says, a little bit of salt and pepper, and they will be ready to go. We'll see about the olive oil. Mm, mm, salt. Mm, mm. Then basically, mm. we're going to put um, all of that on a plate, put the salmon on top and drizzle it with our labna garlic sauce, which I'm like super excited about. If you know me Love all, the if you've watched any of these, uh, you know mm. I love a good cream sauce. So anything like this, fantastic. Um, I'm very excited about this. Creamy. And I love fish, so, mm. you know. This is gonna be delicious. This is gonna be delicious. And I find cheese in seafood vastly underrated because like I could eat my weight in cheese. It's the reason I can't be vegan, I'm sorry, I tried. Cheese is a hard one. Well, cheese and butter is a hard one, and bacon. I'm good and without butter. I'm good without bacon. It, it's got to be really hard to be vegan. I can see if you're always vegan, but to know the taste of bacon and to turn down, that's true strength. True strength. I don't know if I could do that. I, I could be at the gates of heaven and God be like, that bacon, though, and I'd be like, man, fair enough. <laughs> I just have to roll with them punches. Again, mad respect to my vegan friends. I can't do it. So, it's like, y'all yeah, are yeah. better than me. I wish I could. I, I tried it. Yeah, it did not work mm. out. Cheese got me. Cheese and sushi. Yeah. Cheese and sushi. Sushi at least is very, very fancy, though. It's almost bougie, <laughs> but still fancy. That's why I like it. It's fancy. <laughs> it's nothing that you just buy in Kroger can be bougie, so you're safe there. You're safe there. Um, not that there's anything wrong with being bougie. It's just all things in balance. Everybody needs some bougie time. You know what I mean? But there's other times you have to get back to work and do your thing. I mean, not now. We're not allowed to work. But, you know, normally. <laughs> I'm going to stir this a little bit. Oh, yes, please. Give it a little bit of all that garlic. Ooh. Good and timing. And that is our veggies, so good thing he's stirring those, making oh, sure they're not that sticky. That smell, though. Ooh, smell if like you that. love garlic, this is a big bunch of yum yum. <sighs> mm. Oh, my That's gosh. I'm so happy right now. All right, so we're going to add this to the farro. Yes, we're going to put that into our pot of farro that we boiled until tender. Um, ooh, rogue, got some rogue carrots, carrots down. It's okay, we got a lot of them. Whoop. We do, Woo. we do. Hot, hot. Ah, Hopefully those don't catch the garbage can on fire. I'm sure they'll just melt a little plastic. They won't, they won't. <laughs> the vegetable will not get hot enough to melt the plastic. I don't know if y'all knew that. We're also going to add our chopped dates there. Oh, that's true. So I will bring those over. I got you right here. Ooh, yes. I'm going to like try to break these up a well, little bit. Well, now I'll do two with this okay. too. Just like they're like seriously, those sugars, like when they said sticky. concentrated, not joking. Like that uh, is some very sticky stuff. It's like plain mm -hmm. maple syrup, basically. It is a little bit. It's almost like a candy <laughs> thing, you know? But you just really, and the heat helps disperse it a little bit too. And this is hard to do and show you at the same time. I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> this is hard work, y'all. I mean, not like out in the sun all day hard work. I don't remember what hard work was. It's been so long. But in the olden times. Back when we were allowed to work. I used to all day up hill both directions with your burden and mine on both my backs. He was barefoot. The my whole good back time. and my broke back. 
Oh, ooh, look at that. Look at that. Delicious. All right. So I'm just going to start our pan here. And we add a little bit of olive oil, like she said, and a little bit of salt and pepper. Just a drizzle. It's always just a drizzle. I shouldn't say always, but it is a lot of times. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Got that backwards. Got that backwards. Got that salt. Boom. Yeah, so that was pepper, then salt. A little bit of olive oil, a little bit of extra stir. That is very colorful. Very, very colorful. And then while she does that, I'll get the first plate and prepare it. Boom. I'm very excited. It smells phenomenal, you guys. I don't know why smell a vision is not a thing, but... Because people would misuse it. You know what I mean? <laughs> they would. Let me have this just for two seconds. People would misuse smell vision Remember Al Bundy back in the day that, uh, what was it? Um, Married with Children. That's right. <laughs> Married with Children. They had smell vision I don't know if y'all, you know, are the appropriate age or whatever, but it came out with the TV Guide. And when the TV guy came out, he would tell you to turn to certain pages that literally had a scratch and sniff, and that's how you break your drink. I just shattered my glass, Kitty. All right, so what we've got in here is our farro, our carrots and zucchini that we've cooked in the fond. We've got our right. sherry vinegar. We've got our garlic. Like, just all of these amazing flavors coming together. Um, so good. And then here we have our fish with the salt and pepper and also the lime that we added just because, right. you know, we had it and it's fun. So that's awesome. Mm. And then we're going to top that with our labna garlic sauce here. Some labna, some salt, some pepper, and all around delicious yumminess. Delicious yumminess. Gets to go on our fish here. Just connect that, make it look very pretty if I can, I hope. Oh. I'm not the artist here, uh, Gerald David is, so hopefully he might <laughs> make that look better, I don't know. No, I think you got oh, it. Oh, that's phenomenal, look how I think pretty you that got is. It. I think you got it, I also think I just found a piece of glass. That looks fantastic. What else does it get garnished with, Kitty? Um, let's see if there is anything else. So, we've got the cooked farro, we've added the cooked vegetables, chopped dates. Uh, serve the cooked fish over the finished farro, <laughs> top with the, the fish with the garlic lava, and enjoy. And that's this what we've awesome. done here. This is awesome. Trying to avoid, you know. That, oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. True. <laughs> We're not wearing shoes. Yeah. That's the issue. <laughs> uh, wear shoes in the kitchen. We're idiots. Um, I'm Gerald David. <laughs> and I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Thank you all.